creepy. Oh, we're live. <laughs> we are live on Facebook. So oh, I, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, so I will uh, say good evening um, and welcome to Exeter Library's World Book Night virtual author talk with C.L. Taylor, otherwise known as Callie. Um, so thank you, Callie, for coming along this evening, all but virtually. Um, yes. So thanks again for coming. And um, we were just quickly chatting before about your latest book, Strangers, um, um, which came out on the 2nd of April. Mm -hmm. um, and it's already a Sunday Times bestseller, which is, must be very exciting. You must be very proud. Um, but also, um, how do you feel about it coming out at such a difficult time? Because obviously it wasn't great timing, was it, for a book to come out? Yeah, um, I'll just show people what it looks like. So this is, this is Strangers. This is my second hardback. It's actually my seventh novel, um, but the only, only the second time I've had a hardback. Um, yeah, the, the timing couldn't have been worse, really. Um, you know, it was sort of t sort of touch and go whether or not there'd be a lockdown or not. But um, when the, the news about the virus seemed to be getting closer and closer to home, we decided to cancel all of the promotional um stuff for the tour yeah. um which was due to happen on 2nd of, of april i was supposed to be up in edinburgh and then going to newcastle durham liverpool um leeds and london bristol um so it was a pretty extensive tour planned um and it, you know it all went out the window yeah um even things like sort of radio interviews were cancelled because really? they they didn't want people in the studio yeah um, and, uh, um, and press was kind of harder to come by because everybody was reporting on the virus, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a bit of a, a mad, frantic scramble. Um, but, you know, lots of people were very, very kind. Um, uh, my virtual festival let us do a um, crime panel for free. Um, uh, there were other authors who let me, who interviewed me on their pages um, I set up a book swap with other authors who had books out at the same time and we all donated books to each other to give away during our Facebook lives. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we could kind of cross, cross pollinate a bit and, and let yeah. people know about our, um, each other's books. Um, and yeah, it was, it was basically, you know, everything and anything that yeah. I could do online to help, to help spread the word. Um, and also to try and help out um, independent bookshops because um, I was, I, I do partner up with Max Minervas who are in North Bristol and offer a signed copy if, if yeah. people buy it from there and it's personalised to whoever's bought it. Um, but because I couldn't go to the bookshop anymore, no. we had to come up with, uh, with a way round, which was me writing book plates at home and a, a personalised note um and and a bookmark and then i send that to max minervas and then and then they they send it out to the people who've ordered it so we've come up with some interesting workarounds yeah, i think it's it has been a really interesting time hasn't it for doing things that are sort of different um but being able to uh you know still get the message across and so was uh becoming the sunday times bestseller was that like a, a real shock for you is that your first one no, it's actually my sixth one. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. I know. Um, so my very first book, The Accident, uh, didn't make it into the top 10, uh, Sunday Times top 10. Um, so it wasn't a Sunday Times bestseller. But from the lie, my second book, every single book has been um, a Sunday Times top 10 bestseller. But this time I was so nervous because, you know, one, one supermarket cancelled its orders of new books really? for April. Wow. So, so basically we were down to two supermarkets um, stocking it. That was the only place to get it in person, although people were, you know, ordering it online from different yeah. places. Um, but, uh, and I just thought, you know, everybody's staying home. I mean, you know, we've been avoiding going to the supermarket if we can because I'm asthmatic. Um, so, you know, who's going to wander down a book aisle? You know, you just want to get yeah. in, get your food and get out. So I was, I was so chuffed. I think the first week, the, the part week on sort of three, four day sales, um, I was number 16. And then after a full week, it went to number 10. And I was right. just like, oh, <laughs> no, because so many other books came out at the same time. And, you know, I think 
it's, it's down to my readers. Was a, it was a really busy day, wasn't it? There was tons out on that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, Loads of brilliant, brilliant books. Yeah, really, yeah, really sort of. So, yeah, that's so good. So you must yeah. be very proud. I am, I am. I'm grateful to my readers who, who did go out to the supermarket to go and get their copies. So um, it wouldn't have happened without them. So. Um, did you want to say a bit about Strangers and, um, you know, how, what it's about and for people who are watching that haven't read it? Um, yeah. Um, so... It's about, uh, Strangers is about three lonely people um, whose lives all connect when they become involved in a crime that takes place in a uh, shopping centre. So we've got Gareth and he is a security guard and he works in the CCTV office of the shopping centre. He lives at home with his mum um, who's got dementia. Then there's Alice, who's a shop manager of a fashion store. She's been divorced for a couple of years and she's just getting started with internet dating. And there is Ursula, who's a courier, but she also happens to be a kleptomaniac. And she often goes to Alice's shop to steal things when she feels stressed. Now, each of the characters have a different mystery in their lives. So the book begins with the three of them all standing around a dead body. That's You're not too much of a... Wow. I know. But you don't know who it is and or why they've done it, um, or even if they did do it. Um, and then we go back in time a, a week and we follow each of the individual characters. It's in the third person, um, uh, present tense. And so we find out that... Gareth's mum has been receiving postcards from her supposedly dead husband. Um, Alice moves in with a new landlord and is very intrigued by his locked basement door. And Alice goes on a internet date that goes really badly wrong, but she's saved by a knight in shining armour called Simon. And then she receives messages saying, don't trust Simon. And tied in with all of this is another subplot about the harbourside murderer is or isn't somebody pushing people into the River Avon in the early hours of the morning. So that's it in a nutshell, really. It's, um, it's set I'm reading at the moment and uh, I'm about halfway through and um, it's incredibly tense and incredibly, some of the characters, but I won't give too much away, but some of them are quite creepy. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> um, but you do have a real ability to write um, that sort of tension into a novel. And I think that's, um, that's like we were saying earlier about like anxiety and some people have to read the end of a book because they can't cope with not knowing what happens. Um, I think you're really good at that, about sort of setting that sort of tension in a novel. And um, I like that. Um, so I haven't read the end of it because I didn't want to, I don't want that tension to be spoiled. Oh, good. Um, but I I'm really intrigued to to find out the sort of uh, to find out more about um, Ursula, Alice, and Gareth because, like you say, there's all. I don't know where it's going. I have got no idea, um, and I like that in a thriller. I think that's uh, I think that's really good. Um, and uh, so um, we've got a couple of comments that are popping up on Facebook saying Amanda Milner is watching and says she how lucky she felt to attend the online publication day. Oh yes, hello Amanda. Yes, um, I in, instead of um, having my normal publication day, or the one that I had planned, which was supposed to be at Edinburgh Noir at the bar, um, I I published I had a party on my Facebook page instead. Um, oh, really? And, cool. Yeah, and I, I I basically I wanted it to be very light-hearted and fun. Um, but everybody, really. Um, so it wasn't all a big sales thing about my book and buy my book. I actually did some games. Um, so one of the games, I printed off lots of photos of me during my life. And then I printed off lots of photos of strangers at the same stages in their life. And we played a game called Stranger or CL Taylor, where I, <laughs> I held a picture up to the uh, up to the camera and people had to guess. And uh, And the first one I saw because there's always a lag with Facebook comments, the first one I saw would win a prize. Yeah. I had 21 prizes, books, um, bookmarks, book lights, book bags, you know, everything bookish. <laughs> uh, 
and um, it ended up running for, I was only supposed to do it for an hour, and it, it was about an hour and 45 in the end. Wow. But it was so much fun. I showed people around my office. Um, we played, a, you know, a few more games. I answered some questions. But it was just a really lovely way to celebrate the book coming out and just, you know, have a bit of fun with my readers, really. Because it must have been a bit of, you know, after having that huge tour planned, it, it, you, it, would have, it was a bit of an anticlimax for you to have, you know, so it was nice to do something that, you know, made you yeah. feel, feel good and also that you can give back a bit to your readers as well. Because you have got quite a, a fan base, haven't you? People, you've got people like waiting anxiously for your next <laughs> book to come out. And you're writing at the moment, aren't you? Because I, I follow you on Twitter and I've been watching you doing your uh, your word count every day and feeling really sorry for you it looks so stressful it's like writing an essay but like 10 times worse yeah I've been uh, I've, I've been posting I decided that the because because promoting strangers has taken up a lot of of my time um I sort of fell behind with my word count for the next book which I'm supposed to, to deliver to my editor around about the first of June um although I might have to ask for a couple of weeks extension Hi, Phoebe, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> uh, so what I decided to do was basically shame myself online into writing oh, a lot every yeah. day. Um, so I, I decided that I would, um, every day on Instagram, I would post the previous day's word count and the running total of, of the new novel. And actually that worked really well last week and I managed to write 10,000 words in a week. But uh, this week I've had other things to do. I've had to write a synopsis for my agent and that took me several days. So I haven't actually added any new words this week, but the guilt is incredible. You know, yeah. I, I worked for 10 days without a break. I didn't work. I didn't have a break last weekend. I've just been working. And today I was like, I need to have a break. 10 yeah. days is, you know, that's a bit ridiculous. So um, I'm going to write more words tomorrow and I will be shaming myself publicly on Instagram <laughs> at the end of the day or on Saturday morning and then I'm going to have the weekend off good I idea um, but next week 10,000 words again and to keep writing 10,000 words until I've finished it that's quite hardcore isn't it are you, um, <laughs> are you allowed to say what it's about or you, is it a secret still uh, I um I don't I I don't really like going into too much detail no. Partly because, um, because sort of, if, if you let it out, then you lose a bit of the magic. Because mm. um, it's it's only in my head at the moment, um, other than the synopsis I've written for my agent. Um, but I can say it's another three hander. Um, but this time it's three women, and two of them are sisters. But there's a twelve year age gap, and one of the sisters uh, has gone missing. So in her thread, you sort of find out what, what was happening 18 months ago. Then in the present day thread, you've got um, her older sister looking for her. And the third woman um, is, I would describe her as a bit of a Lady Macbeth character. Oh. She can uh, power behind the throne. Um, but, I, but I can't really say more than that because um, I, I don't really want to give away to whom she is a power behind the throne no. so i would just keep that bit to myself that's good i think keep a little bit back and then uh, so is, is that due out the same time next year or do you not have a publication date yet or well yeah um my publishers put um cl taylor untitled book eight um up on the internet um, <laughs> on all of the bookshops and stuff uh, with a publication date of the 27th of march oh, so no pressure <laughs> 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 I know, and I've also got um, after I finished it. Well, after I've delivered this book, I've got to do my copy edits for um, my second young adult thriller, which is The Island, um, and that comes out in January. So at some point this year, I'll stop and have a rest. But I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I've got some more comments, so I'll read those out for you. Um, Fiona um, commented saying it's a brilliant book. Linda Tunnicliffe also watching. Um, she loves sharing the publication day with, with you again, Kelly. And Diana says, thank you for your amazing books. You have, have an amazing, incredible imagination. Um, oh, that's lovely. 
do you um do you ever uh with your characters are they based on real people or are they all a sort of a figment of your imagination <laughs> um no i i would never base my characters on a real person you know not not, not like the whole of the person mm. but i do um i do take little snippets from from different people um so you know for example i've got a friend who really really hates coriander and it tastes like soap and he has a really violent reaction to it and i used that for for one of the characters in the past um and then also i've i've used things that my my partner does um in the missing the main character's husband um is able to sort of compartmentalize um his life so yeah. when he's at work he just thinks about work and when he's at home he leaves work you know and that sort of thing Whereas I'm the sort of person that it all just jumbles around all the time and I, yeah, I can't separate machine, it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I used I used the sort of my partner's kind of way of thinking for a character because it because it worked for that character. Um and you know, people who were horrible to me, I might, <laughs> you know, kill I've them off. Few, I've seen a few people on Twitter say that, that they've seen particularly at the moment um, people saying they you know people who haven't social distanced and things they're going to end up in their next book and <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> quite so, I, mean, I mean you know even uh years ago so my son's eight now and six six years ago six and a half years ago i was on a train and um he covered his face with stickers so i took a photo and then when i took the photo when i looked at the photo there was a person who was staring at me from between the gap in the seats <laughs> staring and i found it really like oh that's really creepy although i'm sure the person is lovely but i ended up using that photo as the inspiration uh behind the antagonist in sleep and that just stayed with me for years and years and years and then i was like ah oh, that photo uh, i'm going to use that person's going to be my antagonist so <laughs> Yeah, do watch out for writers. Yeah. <laughs> They're always watching. I quite see some authors that will also name you, won't they, in a book, um, so you can become sort of a character in their their next uh, novel. Um, so yeah, for, I better, did the, or, for better or the, worse. <laughs> yeah, the the Twitter handles that are in um, Strangers are actually real Twitter handles. Are they? Yeah, I had a bit of a, co a competition on Twitter, basically saying, if you want to be in my book, just, you know, retweet or whatever it was. And so, yeah, so what, if you look up all of the handles, uh, <laughs> they're all there. But they're I've all got there. a disclaimer at the end saying it doesn't, rec it doesn't um, <laughs> represent their personalities. So. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, we've got another Jen, from Jen saying she loved the book. So lots of, lots of your fans um, oh, talking tonight. Thank you, everyone. Um, when, so when you're planning your book, your plotting, do you have, do you go into it thinking about sort of the whole idea or it, does it start with the character or it, does it dif differ from book to book? Yeah, it, it differs from book to book. Um, so with my first book, The Accident, um, there was a competition that I was entering on uh, the theme of keeping a secret and I'd sort of been mulling it over um, and then I was I was about seven months pregnant and I was shopping in a supermarket and I was in a queue and um, just sort of staring around and the character from the book actually told me the first few lines of the story and and I was like and it was like coma there's something soothing about the word in, in the way it conjures up a dreamless sleep. And I was like, oh, interesting. And so um, I, this, I sort of let the character keep talking to me. And then when I got home, I wrote it all down. Now, that is the only time that has ever happened to me. So I'm assuming it's a pregnant thing. Um, <laughs> and, but with other books, it's, um, it's often, a, you know, a what if, you know, mm. what if for the lie what if all of your friends turned against you or what if one friend turned all your other friends against you um what if um the missing what if your child went missing and you suspected members of your family um and then the escape was inspired by a news story that i saw on 
Avon and Somerset Constabulary's Facebook page about a, they were basically saying this woman was supposed to attend court today to hand over custody of her child and she's gone on the run. Um, if you see her or the child, please ring the police. And the woman's family had written underneath, she's not the danger to the child. She's trying to keep the child safe. And then I just thought, oh, imagine if you were that mother, you know, and everybody was setting you up as a bad mum who was a danger to your child. I thought that would be terrible. Um, and so that I used that as the basis for, for the escape. Um, the fear, that's about um, a woman who was groomed by her karate teacher um, and then years later sees him with another teenager and that was based by the real news story about the teacher, not karate, who took his pupil to France and the oh, big yeah. manhunt. Yeah, yeah. So that inspired that. Um, and then, you know, Strangers was just inspired by me thinking, you know, I want to write a book about lonely people, mm -hmm. you know, how isolated people can be. Um, and just wandering around my local shopping centre, I just noticed how many people... Um, were there alone and often how many of those people would be there day after day you know and they would sort of stop and say hello to people and I sort of wondered is this where people come when they're lonely you know just to, to chat to other people and stuff and that's where that all came from um, and the idea of setting setting a crime in a shopping centre was quite interesting as well. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of any other. Um, I, I couldn't think of the, any other. And I know Bristol, so I think that's really nice. But do you do you like right? Because obviously your last book was set um, on the Isle of Rum. Wasn't Rum, it? that's Rum, right. Yeah. yeah. So obviously that wasn't in Bristol, but um, but yeah. So it, do you like do you like to write about a, a place that you know, or do you like to write? Do you like to be able to sort of um, research it? Um, like, or had you been to Rum? It, re it really depends on the story. Um, I knew for sleep that it needed to be somewhere really, really remote so that a, a bunch of people in the hotel would basically not be able to use their phones, not be able to use their internet, not be able to escape. And um, I actually knew the then um, ranger of rum because I was thinking about, you know, one of the Scottish islands. Yeah. And she said, how about rum? She said, you know, if there's a storm... The ferries can't get in or out, so you're just stuck here. And uh, and I said, oh, well, where can I put this hotel? And she said, well, we haven't actually got any hotels, but you could put it in Harris, which is the deserted bit of rum. Yeah. And so I was on sort of Google Earth, and I was looking down, and uh, and I saw a river ran through, and I thought, oh, if that river flooded, then they'd be totally yeah. cut off from the yeah. rest of the island. Um, so yeah, I actually did not go to Ram um, because I couldn't fit it in with the with childcare, um, and because it takes so long to get to Ram, it would have taken me two days to get there wow. um, from Bristol. Then I would have had to stay one day and then come back, and it would have taken two days as well. Um, and I just I just couldn't fit it in. I just with, with childcare and stuff. But I do like. I mean, with obviously with Bristol. I, I know it and um, if it fits the story I will use Bristol yeah. but in the one that I'm writing now it's partly set on the Isle of Gozo which is Malta yeah. um, and I knew I couldn't just well I mean I, I probably could have made up Gozo by you know googling and, mm. and watching YouTube videos and, and watching documentaries and stuff like that but I did have some time this year um, after Christmas and before the school started. Um, so I went there for four days um, with a friend, nice. left my partner and son behind. <laughs> good for them, and, a bit of relaxation and, and uh, research. Well, I thought it would be really relaxing, but we didn't stop because like, every day was a research day. So we were bumping around in taxis and... Um, and, and tracking around towns and, and walking along cliffs and stuff. And I was a bit like, oh, I just, just want a day by the pool. Um, <laughs> but, you know, life could be worse. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, it, was, it was good to, um, to, to go there to, to research the next book because now while I'm writing it, I can, you know, just use my memory, but also I've taken loads of photos and videos. And while I was there, I described what I could see and hear and smell and all of that kind of thing. That's and they'll all end up in the book. 
We have a question from Diana. Do your neighbours know that you're an author? My neighbours? Yeah. My postman knows that I'm an author. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, my neighbours do know. Um, also, um, every now and then, so I get sent proofs, which are advanced copies of, of books. For the, what they want is other authors to read them and to provide a quote, you know, if, if we enjoyed it. That's yeah. why you see somebody's name on the front, because they read it in advance and sent a quote to the editor. So I have huge piles. In fact, I've got huge piles here. Um, and every now and then I stick a bunch at the front of the house. Um, and I did it right as we went into lockdown as well. Um, and, and basically with a sign saying, help yourself. And the, the first time I did that, my neighbours on one side said, oh, what are these? how come you've got so many books? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and so I explained. Um, so they know now. Um, I'm not sure if they've read any of my books or not, but my postman has. And also he's going to carry all the heavy books that are, um, <laughs> that are delivered to me. So uh, I'm very grateful that he understands. Yeah, I know it's... Um... I get some proofs, not as many as authors do, because um, but I get some for um, blogging, and it's uh, yeah. I'm thinking what it's been actually quite weird the last six weeks because I haven't had any, and I had one yesterday. I was really excited. <laughs> I had one yesterday. I'm uh, getting more ebooks at the moment. Our ebook um, as a library service, our ebook um, sort of selection over the lockdown and our um, use has gone up massively. Oh, um, sure. So, so I think, um, and I saw in the in the press today that um, you know reading um, has gone up hugely in lockdown. Um, have you found? Um, have you been able to read in lockdown? As I know, a lot of people haven't um, been able to sort of concentrate. Or I haven't had any time. <laughs> I've been, I've been, um, I've got this proof by uh, Jane Fallon, her new book, Queen Bee. And I've been trying to read it for ages, but I just, I just can't, you know, I can't find the time to sit down. And, and often after, if I've been writing, so I was writing a synopsis on Monday and I wrote from, from roughly midday to one o'clock in the morning um, with just a break for dinner. I completely forgot about lunch. Wow. Um, and so after that, I just want to go to bed, but often I will, we'll have dinner at about seven and then I, I just can't face more words because I've been doing words all mm. day, you know, for eight hours. So I just want to watch telly, yeah. but at, you know, at the weekend and hopefully this weekend, which I will not work, um, I can sit in the garden with a book. Yes. And as long as my son's not on the trampoline nattering at me, um, which he's <laughs> liable to do. Um, I might actually get some words read, um, but I, I do most of my reading when I'm not working. Mm. You know, once once a book's finished and delivered, I normally get sort of between a week and two weeks before my editor looks at it, and then I can just read. Can and also, um, yeah, there will be periods of the year that get a bit quieter. If I'm writing just one book and not two, I'll have some time in the autumn. Um, and we were supposed to be going away for two weeks in august but that's unlikely to happen yeah. but um, i'll probably still honor the actual time off and give no, myself a good two idea weeks. yeah have two weeks two weeks of reading so i was going to say that we have lots of um your books on our um our libby app um which is our ebooks um including strength apparently um but there is a little bit of a waiting list on that one so <laughs> um, but we do have the others so if anybody's um watching on facebook who would like to read any of Callie's books um we have them on libby um and also there's um you know still the independent bookshops um if uh, you would like to use those um um to get strangers i'm sure there, there's a lot of them out there at the moment that are um, grateful for people to buy the books as well and particularly on World Book Night where it's all about reading and um, yeah. sort of promoting that um, side of it uh, mm. yeah I think um, and you know obviously with a lot of the, well all of the independent bookshops closed at the moment um, they're all sort of doing online delivery so it's even more important but yeah check out Libby um, you can download that for free um, with a library card um, so that's good um, so we're going to drop. We're going down to one minute. So we will just get cut off. So I don't want to just say um, just 
disappear. So I'd like to say thank you, Kelly, for coming along this evening. It's been great to talk to you again. Um, and you. hopefully we'll talk again in the, when your next book comes out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the one that I'm being so secretive about now. I'll be yes. able to tell you all about it. You will, yeah. So we'll look forward to that. And um, hopefully when um, that one comes out next March, um, we'll be in a better position. And maybe um, if you're ever, you know, in the vicinity of Exeter Library again, we'd love to have you um, in, in person. Um, yes. But if, if we're still, I mean, I hope we won't still be in lockdown, but um, we'd also welcome you back virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're much only, rather, we'd much rather see you in, in person. <laughs> you're only just down the road from, from Bristol on, yeah. on a good train. It's it's about an hour. So Yeah, no, we'd love to, love to have you back. So um, thank you again for coming. And, and, and thank you to everybody watching on Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to say before you go? No, just thank you, Karen, very much for inviting me on. And thank you for everybody that's watching. Um, and you can follow me on social media, CL Taylor, most places. <laughs> I won't list them all. Well, good luck with the, with the writing, and I hope you manage to have the weekend off. Um, I know Serena, who's watching, is a big Jane Fallon fan, so um, ah. she'll, be, she'll be keeping her eye out for that one when it comes out. <laughs> ah, good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, good. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yes, thank you, Karen. Thank, thank you. you everyone for watching. And next time, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.